Thank you. I'd like to begin with a question. Do I have any dog lovers in the audience? <laughs> it was because of my love for dogs that I began my career in 1978. Typically, if a dog's owner calls in for help with their dog, usually they're having an issue with their dog. And that's my job. It's always been my job to determine why a particular dog is behaving a certain way, and then to come up with solutions that work for that dog, as well as that dog's owner. Now, I have another question for the audience. How many of you have heard of a condition referred to as separation anxiety in dogs? Show of hands. Well, look around you, that's a lot of hands. Final question. How many of you have heard of a condition referred to as containment phobia in dogs. Look around you, very few hands, and this is a huge problem. When a dog's behavior is misdiagnosed, there's no cure. And when dog behavior is interpreted the wrong way, dogs are given away. Today, is about giving you new insights into these two conditions so that together we can save a dog's life. I'd like to begin with a story about Aaron and Michael and their dog, Ava. Now, in many ways, Ava was the perfect dog. She's great with people. She's superb with her children, obedient. But Aaron and Michael called in because Ava could be very destructive whenever she was left home alone. I remember on our first appointment together how they recalled that from the time she was a puppy, they nicknamed her their Houdini dog. If ever they tried to confine Ava in the kitchen with the baby gate, just for housebreaking purposes, that little Ava, she would just scramble right over the gate. At that point in time, they thought she just wanted to be with them. But as time went on, and they had to go to work, they decided, well, let's leave Ava out in the yard. They had a big, beautiful, safe, walled-in backyard. But they noticed when they came home from work these horrible scratch marks by the back door. And as time went on, they saw the same kind of scratching at the side gate. But she was also digging. It looked as though she was digging trying to get out. Well, Michael fixed the gate. But as Ava grew, clever Ava, she discovered she could jump the wall. Now, she didn't go anywhere. As a matter of fact, Aaron and Michael would be coming home from work, and there'd be Ava sitting on the front porch <laughs> waiting for him. But it was at this point in time they realized they had to start leaving her indoors. So they decided to try the crate. And then this is what they came home to. This is Ava's plastic crate after one day. Well, Michael, they love their dog. Michael went out and bought Ava a beautiful pen where she had more room, she could see out everywhere. This pen was so big, he needed to keep it on the back porch, right? Well, Ava was determined to get out of this pen also. And they came home to this. Ava not only figured out how to dislocate the bars, she also dislocated her foot in the process. Now what are they going to do? They can't let Ava continue to hurt this, herself, so they decided, OK, well, we have to leave her indoors. Let's try the laundry room. Yeah, the laundry room. Big, safe. She can't escape the laundry room. And then this is what they came home to. <laughs> Clever Ava. Within a matter of days, she discovered how to open the laundry room door with that lever door handle, and she managed to escape into the garage. And this is what they came home to. Ava thought she might be able to get out the garage door. Well, they replaced the lever door handle. This is what the doorknob still looks like now. And by the way, during her excursions trying to escape the house, she also slipped into the boys' bedroom, tried to go out through the window. But now I ask you, have you ever, 
Have you ever heard of a dog behaving like this one? I bet some of you have. And here's the deal. Ava has containment phobia. Behavior never lies. Now, containment phobia could be defined as an extreme fear of being trapped, feeling confined. Well, what about the analogy that many of us have heard, that the crate for a dog is just like a den is for a wolf? Well, here's the big difference. A wolf's den has an open door policy. <laughs> a wolf can come and go at will. In the heart of a wolf, to be trapped would be life-threatening. This is a survival instinct. And aren't all dogs, all breeds, descendants of the wolf? They share the same DNA. Truly, that analogy, you could no more put a wild wolf in a crate than you could stick me in a dress. <laughs> it's not happening. Now, here's the problem. The problem is that containment phobia is almost always misdiagnosed as separation anxiety. The one thing that these two conditions have in common, the one thing that has clouded the thinking of the multitudes, is that in both cases, the destructive behavior occurs when their owners are gone. Really, folks, aren't our egos something? <laughs> if it happens when I'm gone, it must be about me. Now, I don't want to get off the topic here, but I do have to share that I could list at least 18 more reasons in addition to these two for why dogs might behave destructively when their owners are gone. But separation anxiety became a very popular catch-all phrase. Don't get me wrong. Separation anxiety does exist and it can be horribly traumatic for dogs as well. Did you know that the term was first used to describe the feelings of loss and anxiety for people? We can thank this gentleman, John Bowlby, for first coining the term. In 1969, he published what he called the attachment theory. He proved that human beings, that we come into the world pre-programmed to form attachments with one another. It's in our DNA. It's a survival instinct. And he used the words like, if a human being, if suddenly we were missing a relationship that we had counted on, maybe the death of a loved one, we would experience anxiety about being separated. That's where the words came from. And aren't dogs social creatures, right? That's why they're called pack animals. They also come into the world pre-programmed to form attachments with one another. And that's what separation anxiety would feel like for a dog. It'd be like, oh, my owner's gone. I hate being left alone. So you can see the difference. Separation anxiety is more relationship-based where containment phobia is about being confined. Now, I'd like to share a picture of two dogs that recently went through a bout with separation anxiety. Meet Howie and Cooper. <laughs> Howie and Cooper had never been destructive before, but their owners were married recently and they went off on their honeymoon. Howie and Cooper had never had their owners leave for days, nor had they ever had a house sitter. Even house sitters have to step out. And this is what the house sitter came home to. They managed to get into the office closet and pull out everything and destroy it. And when they were done venting their frustrations there, they went to the couch. So these are the pictures that were texted to the newlyweds on their honeymoon. <laughs> Once again, behavior never lies. You can see the difference in these two conditions by what the dog chooses to destroy. 
All of Ava's destruction was in relationship to being confined and needing to escape. Howie and Cooper, on the other hand, they vented their frustrations on stuff in the house, right? So the solutions to these two things. With Ava, the solution, biggest solution was in providing her with a dog door, right? Now, Ava didn't feel confined. Like that wolf, she had freedom of movement. She could come and go at will. For Ava, we also needed to install an electronic fence system on the wall to stop her from jumping the fence, but really, you'll be happy to know that these two things, in addition to a little training, Ava and her family are living happily ever after. Howie and Cooper, with separation anxiety, the solutions are gonna be more relationship-based. Sometimes it's in teaching the dog, as well as the dog's owner, to be a little bit more independent of each other, even when they are together. But basically, with separation anxiety, since it's relationship-based, every relationship's different, and so the solutions are also gonna vary accordingly. Now, remember how in the very beginning, I said something about dogs being given away. It's estimated that 3.9 million dogs will enter our shelters, and that's just this year, nationwide. Now the good news is, more than half of those dogs will find their forever home. Here's the bad news. It's estimated that 1.2 million dogs will be killed in our shelters. That's killing 3,287 dogs every day. It's also estimated that somewhere between 10 to 20% of our entire dog population will suffer from some level of containment phobia. And these dogs are much more likely to end up in our shelters. Let me be very clear. I am here to recruit you in sharing what you've learned about these two different, very different conditions in dogs. You may be chatting online. You may be talking to a coworker. But I know one day you're going to hear about a dog owner who's very troubled and their dog's been diagnosed with separation anxiety but you recognize the difference. You hear the telltale signs of containment phobia. Sure, it's destructive when they're gone, but it's destroying window coverings, door frames. It won't be crated. They're calling it a Houdini dog. You could make the difference. I sincerely believe that together, we could save hundreds and thousands of dogs' lives, as well as the very troubled hearts of all those people that love them. Thank you. <laughs>